Deacon 170 Presence, Overcoming Thoughts of Suicide, You Belong in Community. Good afternoon, people. I am your host, Deacon 170. And today's lesson under our Overcoming Thoughts of Suicide study, we're going to be talking about You Belong in Community. You Belong in and community. All right, let's get right into it, people. Who in your life uplifts you, encourages you, and challenges you to seek God faithfully? Who knows the things you're struggling with and is there for you in a time of need? No matter what time of day or night it is, those are very beautiful questions, and I would like to answer those questions at the end of this lesson. Let's continue. God didn't create you to go through life on your own. He created you to be surrounded by other followers of Christ. To build you up, pray for you, and carry you when you, go, when you can't go any further. If you don't have relationships like that in your life, you're missing out. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? The Bible tells us that when two or more people are gathered in the name of Jesus, God is there among them. Two people are better than one. The book, of, the book of Ecclesiastes says, because if one of them falls, the other is there to offer a helping hand. And just like a cord of three strands woven tightly together is not easily broken. A group of believers standing together for each other is strong and united. We're going to take a moment here to pray this prayer. And it goes like this. Father God, thank you for creating me to exist in community with people who love and encourage me. I know that I can't go through life on my own and ask that you would help me have the courage to reach out to others for help and guidance. I believe that you will bring the right people into my life to help me grow closer to you every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, we're going to get to the reference of scripture, and then we'll get to answer those questions. All right, our first reference of scripture is coming out of Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. That's Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. And it reads, For where two or three are gathered together, excuse me, in my name, I am there in the midst of them. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That's Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. All right. Our next reference to scripture is coming out of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And it reads, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him up and you see the value of having somebody there that's Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 and 10 our next reference to scripture is also coming out of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 that's Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 and it says Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Now, let's get into this whole thing to answer these questions. Who in your life uplifts you, encourages you? and challenges you to seek God faithfully. There are a number of people 
there are a number of people. My sister's one of them. She definitely does a great job in, in, in encouraging me and lifting me up and, and um, you know, challenging me to see God's face because she's heading in that same direction. My mom, you know, she's, she, she's there. She does the same thing, you know. My oldest son, my son, Marcus. He's, he does a great job of praying with me and for me and encouraging me and saying that dad is going to be all right. My oldest son, my oldest sister, Erica, my mom, Barbara Harris. Yeah, mama, I'm putting you in here. Call me out, mama. She really does. They do. Joanne. She does. She really do. I mean, when I really, you know, was going through some stuff, I mean, seriously, from last year all the way up to, Joanne has been, she's been here. She has been encouraging me to, to stay strong, to continue to see God's face. She had really been really on my tape my case about it too at times she has she has really been on my case she tells him you can't you can't quit you can't give up this ain't the time to quit how would your children how would you how would your children feel about that you gotta think about them Who knows the things you're struggling with and is there for you in a time of need? No matter what time of day or night it is. Those same people. They're there. These same people have been pushing me to, to stay to stay in the light of Christ. All the stuff I've been dealing with all this time, man. All the stuff I've been dealing with, I've been wanting to quit and give up and just say, heck with life, man. I don't want to do this thing called life anymore. It's too hard. It's too difficult. This didn't happen for me. That didn't happen for me. It's been a struggle. It's been difficult, man. But those same people, those same people have been with me through it all and keeping me positive so that I will not continue to succumb to thoughts of suicide. It's very real, people. Wanting to harm yourself is a real thing. And there are reasons and factors into why we want to harm ourselves. But guess what? Most of the stuff is lies. There's really no, no reason for us to want to harm ourselves. It's all a trick of the enemy. It's all a trick of the enemy telling us that we're worthless. That we're useless. Nobody loves us. Nobody cares about us. This person did this to us. That person did that to us. They mistreated us. They mistreated me. They talked so bad about me. So negative about me. Threw me out on the streets. Did all kind of stuff to me. They don't care about you. Because if they cared about you, they wouldn't have did this. See, this is what the enemy does. He plays on these things. He played on these things in my mind. Oh, if they really cared about you, they wouldn't have did that to you. They knew what you was dealing with. They knew what you was struggling with. They knew what happened. But they didn't care about what you was going through. They didn't care about what you was dealing with. They only cared about them. There is some truth to it. 
some truth to it. But it's okay. It's okay. God got me. He been holding me down all this time, you know. And he's placed those very few people in my life to encourage me to keep going on. There's others. It's always it's, it's always good to have a, a group of people, man, in your life that does that sees the best in you. Despite your shortcomings and failings, man. They still push you to do what's right. And not only that, they still push you to stay with Christ. Because they're on this journey with you. I would have never thought in a thousand years that I would end up like this. That I would end up, end up like this. But it's okay. It's okay. So I'm going to end this lesson because this is the end of this lesson. Overcoming thoughts of suicide. We can overcome, not within our own merit, but with Christ. With Christ who strengthens us. I want to bless you guys and say thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Deacon 170. You guys have a blessed day today. In Jesus' name.